If you want to work with data in R, there are two major frameworks to do that. There's Dplyr and there's Data Table. Both frameworks are fantastic and they are super powerful. So in today's video, I'll show you how to use both frameworks by going through common operations that you'll likely need to be able to do when you want to work with data. And before we dive into both frameworks, we should probably check out our data first. In this video, we want to work with the AIMS dataset from the model data package. We can make it a little bit nicer by throwing it to the generator package where we use clean names, and that way we have nice snake case names. Now, this already is a table, so I don't really need to make it into one, but just for fairness sake, let's just show you what it means to make a data frame or a data table or anything else into a table. We just pass it to as tibble, and then we have a tibble, and we can save it into a variable that we call aims. Now, to make this into a data table, we can just take the data set and pass it into the as data table function and save it in a variable that we call df aims. And then if we look at this, you already see that the output looks much different. Here we see that my console is full with all the columns that we have in our data set. Some people prefer this kind of output, but if you're anything like me, then you probably like the table style where you first have a couple of columns, followed by an indicator that there are more columns that are not currently displayed. Luckily, data table allows you to do a similar thing. All you have to do is to tweak a couple of options. And then if you take a look at the output, you now only have two columns here and the rest is indicated as not shown. Now, before we dive into specific operations, we should probably talk about how both Dplyr and data table work in general. You see Dplyr uses lots of functions or verbs, as they also call them, that are chained together to achieve a specific result. The nice thing about this is that the names of these functions are usually something that is also understandable even to non-programmers. This makes the code easy to understand, but it can become quite long quite fast. On the other hand, data table uses a super concise syntax with lots of abbreviations. This is nice when you want to have very short code, but you can also feel lost when you don't know the abbreviations. The most basic thing you have to understand is that any data table can be modified via brackets and up to three components. In the first component, you specify the rows that you want to modify. In the second component, you specify the columns that you want to modify. And in the third component, you want to specify the grouping that you might want to use. But enough theory, let's see this in action. We start with something simple like arranging rows. So let's take a look at our table here. And then we might want to arrange our rows by ascending or descending lot frontage. What we can do is just pass this to the arrange function and then use the lot frontage argument here. And that way things are sorted ascendingly. If we wanted to revert that, we can use the descending function to make that happen. In the data table way, we just take our data table and then we say that we want to order the lot frontage. Remember that the first component always refers to rows, even if you don't specify the other components. Also note that both in data table as well as in Dplyr, you don't have to quote the column names, they just work as is. In any case, if you execute this, you don't really see the column here now. Let's just use the dollar sign for now to access the data to see that things are indeed sorted. And if you want to revert the sorting, you can just use a minus in front of the lot frontage and then things will be sorted descendingly. Here I've used the dollar sign because I didn't want to jump to data table specific stuff. So let's just get rid of this for now. We'll see in a few seconds how to select specific columns. If you want to filter your data for specific rows, that's very easy in both frameworks. With Dplyr, you just have to use the filter function and then say something like that the sale price column that is inside of this data set, we want to get only the rows that are larger than 300,000. And then if you execute this, you see that you now have only 230 rows as opposed to the nearly 3,000 rows you had before. And just like before with the data table, it's also pretty easy. You just have to throw in the exact same thing into the first component inside of the brackets. Here you can see that you have 230 rows because the output shows you the last five rows as well. Next, let us imagine that we not only want to grab specific rows, but also want to have a few selected columns only. With Dplyr, you just have to take the calculation from before and chain that into the select function where you then list the columns that you want to use. 
So here we might only want to get the columns, neighborhood, sale price and lot area and then we have this data set here. In the data table case it's pretty much the same, you just have to throw in the list of names into the second component of the brackets. You can also throw in a few line breaks to make things a little bit nicer, but in principle it's not much harder than that. Remember the second component inside of the brackets always refer to the columns. And a little shorthand that you can use inside of data tables is to use instead of a list you can use a dot which will function like the list command but it's a little bit shorter. As I've said, data table likes to use short and concise notation. But this is not the only way to select columns. In data sets like the Ames housing data set, you often don't want to type out every column yourself but instead want to pick them via a specific criteria. For example, in dplyr you could just take the data set and pass it to the select function and use a tidy select helper like the contains function and stick the word area in there and then you will get only back the columns that contain the word area. In data table this is not that much more tricky but it uses different notation that you have to understand to figure out what's going on. So if we take our data table here and then say we want to get all the rows so we leave the first component in the brackets empty and then we say that we want to get the full subset of the data which uses the shorthand notation .sd but we can also specify what column sd should have and this is where we can then say okay we're looking for all the columns that fit a specific pattern and that pattern is in this case area. So now if you execute this you see that you get the exact same data but it uses a different syntax. Once again this .sd notation can be quite weird at first. You just have to remember that sd stands for subset of data and therefore if you want to have only a selection of that you will have to specify the dot sd calls argument. If you were to not use this sd calls argument here and, and use sd as that you will just get back the full data set because at that point the subset of the data set is just the full data set. You can change that by including the dot sd calls argument. But once you understand that you know that you can look for specific text patterns or you could look for columns based on their data type. For example we could just take this part here and then use the is numeric function to check whether a column is numeric and that way you will get back all the columns that are numeric. In dplyr that's very similar. You could take the select function again but this time instead of using the contains tidy select helper you can use the where tidy select helper and inside of there you will still need to use the is numeric function. So that's how you could potentially get a whole bunch of columns at once without having to list them all. All right this was the a bit tricky, let's get back to some easier stuff. Let's take the example from before and let's try to calculate a new column for this data set. In Depy, what we do is to just extend the chain and then pass it to the mutate function. And in there we could just define a new column name and set it equal to what we want to do. For example, we could take the sale price column and divide it by the lot area column and that way we'd have a new column in there. And once again in data table it's pretty much the same. You just have to use inside of the list, not only pick things, but you can also define them just like we did inside of mutate and that way you'd get the same results back. But here's where data table also has a specialty. You see you could also modify the data table in place. What this means is that you just take the old data table and then inside of the brackets you could for example filter just like we did before but now you could compute this column directly in place. Let's just give this a few line breaks to make the code look nicer and now if you try this you will get an error because if you want to create a new column in place you want to use the colon equal operator. And now if you do this you see that you don't get an error and you also don't get an output. But let's check out the data table. Well there are a lot of columns so we can't really tell but if we were to take this data set and then look for the price by lot area we'd see that it actually is in there. So even though we have never saved any of this calculation here so we didn't do df aims should be set to df aims but modified we never did that but instead we just ran this code here and it changed the object in place. What's more is that you can see here that there were only a few cells that were modified and this happened due to the fact that we also filtered here. If we were to leave out the filter criterion here 
and then rerun the code, we'd see that all the numbers would be calculated. And now if we were to put them back in and then rerun the code, we'd see that still all the numbers aren't there because data table allows you to target only very specific cells and these were recomputed now and the others were just left as is. That's a bit a tricky thing to wrap your head around. So this is why I'm focusing on this here. Just know that using this colon equal operator, you're modifying things in place. And if you just use the regular equal operator and use it inside of a list, then you're not modifying things in place. This is also why you then get an output here. So I hope you can see that dplyr and data table can be quite Quite different sometimes. I know that before we have covered lots of examples where both frameworks were very similar and that's why you might have been wondering what the fuss is about with two separate frameworks. But we'll see more differences when we try to calculate multiple columns at once. You see right now we only have one column computed each time so let's additionally calculate the logarithm of the sale price by sticking that column into the log function. That's a typical thing people like to do with data that spans multiple orders of magnitude so that's why I'm showing you this example here. And then we can also calculate this log price by lot area by taking the values we've just computed and then dividing that by the lot area. And if we execute this we see that mutate will diligently calculate all the things for us. So let's try to do the exact same thing in data table. Let's just copy and paste this part here and throw this in here. And if we execute this now, we'll see that, okay, data table now complains that it cannot find the log sale price. But if we were to just use the values as if we were calculating that value again, then you see that it doesn't have any problem calculating things. So one major difference that you will have to look out for is that in mutate, you can reuse columns that you have just calculated in the next calculation. But in data table, you cannot actually do that. I'll show you one way how to fix that in a second. For now, let me also cover how to calculate multiple things when you want to do calculations in place. In that case, you can use this thing here as an operator by sticking it into these back ticks. And then you can just use your regular equal sign inside of there and then use the calculations that we have just used when we were not calculating things in place. And there you'd see that once again, you don't get any output back because things were modified in place, but also you didn't get any error and things worked out. And honestly, I think this notation is kind of ugly. So that's why I usually like to use the let function instead. Works exactly the same, just looks a little bit nicer and is easier to type. And just to be sure that we check whether we can immediately reuse variables that we've just calculated, let's just stick this in here. But we have to remember we just modified things in place, so we have to reset our data set. So let's re-execute this command. And then if we try to execute this, we see once again the same error that log sale price cannot be found. So here you will also have to recalculate things. Now, if you don't want to recalculate things in data table, then you can use something that is called chaining. It's a bit similar like using a pipe to chain things together, but it uses a different syntax. But we'll also soon see that we can also use native R pipes to achieve a very similar thing. For example, you can take this part here and then chain the resulting data, which is this here, and then use another bracket for chaining and then leave all the rows as is and stick in the calculation we have just copied. And in there, you could use this new column here. And then if you execute this, you of course see that this doesn't work unless you wrap it into a list. So let's make a little bit more room here. And now if we re-execute this, we see now that this works. But of course, this only returns the data that we have explicitly computed here because all the other columns are not in the selection in here. But honestly, I don't like this way of chaining here. What I prefer to do instead is to just use a regular R native pipe to chain things and then use its placeholder and row in the brackets in there. Also, you want to use this chaining only when you don't calculate things in place. When you calculate things in place, there is no return result from this and then things will not work out as you expect. On my blog post, I put in a couple of examples where you can see how things go wrong. But here in this video, I just want to keep things short and tell you just don't mix the different types of calculations if you want to chain things. Anyway, I think it's time to move on to where we want to calculate summary statistics. And in that kind of case, there is no in place calculation mode anyway. So let's get rid of this part here. And now let's figure out how to summarize data. In dplyr, this is once again, just another step inside of the chain. And here's where we use the summarize function. And in there, you can just throw in calculations that you want to use. For example, we could calculate the mean sale 
material price, or we could calculate the number of houses using the specific n function that the player has. And if we execute this, we see that all of our data was summarized into these two rows. And inside of data table, we can just for now get rid of the things that we don't want to use anyway. Then, and then inside of the columns component, we can calculate a new column that we could also call mean sale price. And in there, we just use that we want to use the mean function to calculate things. And if we execute this, we see that we get the exact same result. If you're coming from a deployer perspective, this feels a little bit weird because you're inside of the columns component, but you're using it to summarize multiple rows to one. But if you think about it, what you're really doing here is calculating a new column. And for data table, it doesn't matter how many rows this new column has. This is a much different paradigm than what the player uses. But here for data tables, it works like that. And if we wanted to calculate the column new houses, that should contain the number of houses, we could use the special dot n variable. And that way we'd see that we get the same results as we did with the deployer version. Now, how about running group calculations? In both cases, it's actually pretty easy. Inside of deployer, inside of summarize, we just have to use dot by and say that we want to calculate all the summary statistics by neighborhood. And similarly, we can do the same thing inside of data tables by using the by argument. And in there, we also want to use neighborhood. In this sense, deployer and data table are once again pretty similar. So it's good to see that both frameworks actually agree in a lot of cases. And Anyway, I now want to show you one more cool trick when you want to iterate over multiple columns, when you don't want to apply the mean function on just the sale price, but for example, on all numeric columns. Inside of deployer, you can achieve that by using the across function inside of summarize. And in there, you specify the columns that you want to target and the function that you want to use. Here, we want to use the mean function and the columns that we want to target are all numeric columns. And we've already seen the tidy select helper that can do that, namely the the where function combined with is numeric. And now if you execute this, you see that you have all the mean values for all the numeric columns. In data table, we have to use a different helper function. In this case, it is the L apply function. In there, you want to stick in the subset of data that you currently have and apply the mean function. But in order for this to work, you also need to specify what columns are inside of this subset of data currently. And this is where we use the is numeric function. But if you execute this now, you see that you have way more rows and only one column that contains all the means that were computed by this. And the reason why this happens is because we stick all of this into a list. But what L apply returns is a list of lists. But what you really want to do is to combine these lists with the other list that you calculate. And that's why you can use the combined function that you normally use for vectors and combining lists. And now if you do this, the format is different. I know this is pretty confusing, but once again, this is where we see that a lot of notation is condensed inside of the data table syntax. Just slight deviations might lead to very different results. But in order to drive home the point, let's go for one more example. Let's run the summary statistics not for all numeric columns but for all columns that contain the word area just like we had earlier here all we had to change was using the contains tidy select helper and similarly in data table all we have to change is using the patterns function where we stick area inside of it and finally one remark for those of you who don't like to use l apply but want to use the per package instead you could also just use the per package and then use the map function to get the same results here all right, we've covered a lot of ground and I hope that this video helped you to see the differences and similarities for both the player and data table. I like to think that both frameworks are actually pretty similar and they only differ in some parts. Let me know in the comments which framework you prefer and also if this video untangles some of the mysteries of either framework for you. And if you want to see more R content, then you might want to check out this playlist here. And with all of that said, I say thank you for watching and I will see you next time.